Episode number 165. Courage, my dear Lucy, said Mr. Lorry, as he raised her. Courage, courage. So far all goes well with us, much, much better than it has of late gone with many poor souls. Cheer up, and have a thankful heart. I am not thankless, I hope. But that dreadful woman seems to throw a shadow on me, and on all my hopes. Tut, tut, said Mr. Lorry. What is this despondency in the brave little breast? A shadow indeed. No substance in it, Lucy. But the shadow of the manner of these defarges was dark upon himself, for all that, and in his secret mind it troubled him greatly. Roman 4. Calm in storm. Dr. Manette did not return until the morning of the fourth day of his absence. So much of what had happened in that dreadful time as could be kept from the knowledge of Lucy was so well concealed from her, that not until long afterwards, when France and she were far apart, did she know that 1,100 defenseless prisoners of both sexes, and all ages had been killed by the populace, that four days and nights had been darkened by this deed of horror, and that the air around her had been tainted by the slain. She only knew that there had been an attack upon the prisons, that all political prisoners had been in danger, and that some had been dragged out by the crowd and murdered. To Mr. Lorry, the doctor communicated under an injunction of secrecy on which he had no need to dwell, that the crowd had taken him through a scene of carnage to the prison of La Force. That, in the prison he had found a self-appointed tribunal sitting, before which the prisoners were brought singly, and by which they were rapidly ordered to be put forth to be massacred, or to be released, or, in a few cases, to be sent back to their cells. That, presented by his conductors to this tribunal, he had announced himself by name and profession as having been for 18 years a secret and an accused prisoner in the Bastille. That, one of the body so sitting in judgment had risen and identified him, and that this man was Defarge. That, hereupon he had ascertained, through the registers on the table, that his son-in-law was among the living prisoners, and had pleaded hard to the tribunal, of whom some members were asleep, and some awake, some dirty with murder, and some clean, some sober, and some not, for his life and liberty. That, in the first frantic greetings lavished on himself as a notable sufferer under the overthrown system, it had been accorded to him to have Charles Darnay brought before the lawless court, and examined. That, he seemed on the point of being at once released, when the tide in his favour met with some unexplained check, not intelligible to the doctor, which led to a few words of secret conference. That, the man sitting as president had then informed Dr. Manette that the prisoner must remain in custody, but should, for his sake, be held in violating safe custody. That, immediately, on a signal, the prisoner was removed to the interior of the prison again, but, that he, the doctor, had then so strongly pleaded for permission to remain, and assure himself that his son-in-law was, through no malice, or mischance, delivered to the concourse, whose murderous yells outside the gate had often drowned the proceedings, that he had obtained the permission, and had remained in that hall of blood until the danger was over.